Psychological space is not an easy concept to grasp. The psychologists who write about it even admit it. John Eliot, author of Models of Psychological Space, says, Despite a long history of philosophical and scientific theorizing about psychological space, there currently exists no widely accepted description of this phenomenon. Attempts at describing it have been like trying to define flecks of mica in beach sand. When enough particles are present, their existence is evident, but it is almost impossible to describe them as an entity separate from the sand. Eliot wrote this back in the 80s, and there are not many other texts that explore this idea. We can, however, use analogies and ideas from Buddhism to define what psychological space is and how we experience it. So moving further, let's go into the types of psychological space. John Wellwood defines psychological space by dividing it into three different types of psychological space. Oriented, feeling, and open space. So let's first talk about oriented space. Oriented space is one of the easier types of space to define and understand. Our minds can perceive where we are in space in relation to other objects. We know that we're an inch away from our phone and a foot away from our chair. We are close in space to our neighbors, but far away from someone in the other part of the world. This type of space is studied on its own, separate from the larger concept of psychological space. Next, let's move on to feeling space. This is a little harder to describe. Have you ever just felt heavy, like the weight of the world was on your shoulders? Psychologists like Wellwood would characterize this as feeling space. For example, we often feel better with an expansive open space. Expansive open spaces, even the ones that we just have to think about, make us feel better. And it goes both ways too. Have you ever felt upset and decided to visualize an image of a wide open space? Or sometimes people say, go to your happy place. You are using feelings generated by wide psychological space to calm you down. Most of the time, people think of a wide open beach. Now, this is actually a secret psychological trick that not many people know. The cleaner your workspace is and the more open it is, you'll feel more comfortable working longer hours and having more creativity. In fact, oriented space and feeling space are connected. If you're in a closed closet with not much space, you'll feel similar emotions. And if you're in a larger, homey room with a view and a whole bunch of green plants, you may feel more comfortable. Another way to look at this term is to think of the term headspace. When you're in a good headspace, things are clear. If your head was a room, it would be tidy, airy, and clean. And if you're in a bad headspace, things might be cluttered and all over the place, all over the floor. The room is suddenly full of things. You do not have much space between you and the clutter that fills up your mind. Again, this is not an easy concept to grasp, and there's no way to measure the feeling of being weighed down by stress or the calm that we get from visualizing an open space. But most likely, you probably know what I'm talking about. The last concept within psychological space is open space. And it's like an umbrella term that not only covers oriented and feeling spaces, but also allows you to experience them at the same time. Wellwood equates this to a Buddhist term, empty mind. This doesn't mean that there's a void. In Buddhism, emptiness is a way to explain the state of the world as it is. It is the state of the world without clutter, ego, or anything blocking you from seeing the true wholeness and beauty of what it is. This emptiness covers everything, including the things that are physically next to you and the worries that are figuratively following you. Now, let's move on to the benefits of understanding psychological space. Psychologists today use the term psychological space to remind people of their own space and place in the world. Sure, you are physically in your home, behind a computer, or in a specific country, but where are you mentally? Your physical world and the brain are connected. If your desk has hundreds of papers on it, some books, a little bit of leftover food, and nowhere to set down a coffee cup, you're going to feel a little stressed, busy, and overloaded. Now compare that to a long, large, empty table with 10 chairs on each side. If you sit down to eat there, you'll feel like you have the whole table to sit and think at. When you understand psychological space, you can envision the type of space you need to inhabit. You know what it feels like to be clear and uncluttered. You know where you want to go in terms of your headspace, and this is important. In order to move towards a more positive headspace, you need to know what it feels like. You may be in a space right now that feels cramped. You might feel held back. Although you long for a different type of space, you simply aren't there in the moment. It'll take a journey to get you to that space where you need to be, even if that includes picking up. We cannot be in two places at once. We cannot both be 5 feet and 12 feet away from something. If you want to move into a different headspace, you will have to make the journey there. This may require meditation, patience, therapy, or time. And one of the easiest ways is just to change your environment. And for most people, this just means cleaning it. 
But with awareness of your psychological space, you can assess where you are, where you need to be, and understand what it'll take to get you there. Even something as simple as cleaning your room can make you feel more comfortable and ready to finish whatever work you have. So long story short, the purpose of this video was to teach you about something called psychological space and how it can help you feel more comfortable, less anxious, and even more productive.